politicians, media outlets, and economists around the world. Do you know what they all have in common? That for months, most of them have been warning that we are about to enter a severe economic crisis. Perhaps the worst economic crisis in decades. However, stop. Let's pause for a moment. Despite this, despite the fact that everyone is constantly predicting disaster, in a recent video we explained that there is reason for hope. Reasons such as the robustness of US employment, that possible easing of interest rates by central banks, or the progressive easing of bottlenecks that have been strangling the economy. However, in that video, there was also a big topic that we left pending, a topic that we're going to get to the heart of in this video. If you want to try to predict what might happen to the Western economy, we first have to answer a few questions. Will the inflation we have been enduring for more than a year be curbed? And are there signs that that prices will be brought under control before it's too late? Or will we enter an even worse inflation spiral? Well, in order to answer these questions, I want you to take a look at this chart. What you are seeing on the screen is the evolution of the Standard & Poor's Commodity Price Index. After several months of continuous increases, since last June 2022, the trend has been reversed. Prices have been progressively decreasing again, accumulating a reduction of almost 18% in only two months. This is something that many of you have probably already noticed, for example, when going to a gas station. And certainly, at first glance, it seems to emphatically answer the questions we asked just a moment ago. Yes, high inflation is on its last legs. Finally, prices will return to normal, and economic tranquility will allow us to prosper. Let's see, at the end of the day, all politicians have told us that inflation is due to the fact that the war has made raw materials more expensive. So if they become cheaper now, then that would be the end of the problem. However, wait a minute, let's not go so fast. Firstly, because as you will see in the following headline, as quickly as commodities go down in price, they can also go back up like crazy. German power prices smash record as energy panic engulfs Europe. Benchmark German year ahead power rose 14% after earlier hitting a record 710 euros per megawatt hour. And secondly, because I'm sorry to tell you that although commodities in general have continued to fall in recent months, behind all this statistical joy, there is something fishy going on. Inflation across the Eurozone reaches new all-time high of 8.9%. Yes, there you have it. Despite a drop in commodity prices of around 18% in just a few weeks, European inflation continued to set absolute records. Countries such as Greece, the Netherlands, and Spain recorded annualized inflation of more than 10% in July. Not to mention Baltic countries such as Estonia, which even exceeded 20%. What's more, as you can see in this graph, although prices in the United States are moderating slightly and the cost of energy is less dependent on Russia, the CPI is still around 8% to 8.5%, which is not exactly a great deal. So in light of this, the questions many of you may be asking yourselves are the following. Why is it that, despite commodities plummeting in price, inflation is still so high in Western countries? Are we really close to an easing of prices, or will things get worse? And above all, what on earth has to happen for inflation to be curbed once and for all? So guess what? I can tell you right now that the answer to all these questions will surprise more than one of you. Although it may not seem to be the case, China, the Asian giant, will have a great, a colossal influence on the economic future of the West in the coming months. The question is, what the hell is going on? And what does China have to do with it? Well, let's take a look. In October 2021, a major news item caused a flurry of stories regarding China in newspapers around the world. Evergrande creditors fear imminent default as concerns shake sector. Evergrande's technical bankruptcy highlighted the biggest economic problem China is beginning to face today. Nothing less than a real estate crisis, comparable to that of the 2008 crisis in Western countries. This is a topic that we've talked about recently on our sister channel, Visual Politic. But to put some numbers on the table, Capital Economics, a British consulting firm, estimates that by the end of 2021, there were approximately 30 million unsold properties and close to 100 million more that would be sold but not occupied. Other estimates suggest that counting ongoing developments in China, we could find between 50 and 60 million unsold homes throughout the country. And to put this in perspective, 60 million empty homes would be almost enough to give a home to all the citizens of both Canada and Australia. However, the worst part of all this is not that construction companies have not been able to sell their houses and that China is now full of empty buildings. At the end of the day, that's wasteful, but not much else. 
The worst aspect of all is that Chinese construction companies are terribly indebted. To give you an idea, Evergrande alone has a total debt of approximately $300 billion, which is slightly more than the gross domestic product of a country such as Colombia. In addition, 27% of all Chinese bank loans have been channeled to real estate developers and household mortgages. And of course, with things being as they are, many Chinese citizens are starting to get so angry that they have even threatened to default on their mortgages. Why? Because the construction companies have left thousands of homes half built. So given such a backdrop, it is not strange to come across news like this. China banks may face $350 billion in losses from property crisis. Deutsche Bank AG is warning that at least 7% of home loans are in danger. So you could say that the Chinese financial system is not exactly crushing it. And think about it. What would you do if you were a Chinese bank and you saw that you could lose hundreds and hundreds of millions because people might not pay back their loans? Well, probably something very similar to what the Chinese banks have started to do now. Try to slowly turn off the money tap. That is, stop giving so many risky loans and wait for the bad weather to pass. China new bank loans tumble more than expected amid property jitters. As you can see, this great Chinese real estate crisis bears many similarities to what happened in 2008 in the West. And just as it did then, this real estate crisis may end up causing a banking crisis. However, there is one big difference that may make the Chinese crisis even worse than the one experienced in the West. At least we didn't have COVID-19 lurking around the corner in 2008. It turns out that the Chinese, or at least the Chinese government, is not taking it very lightly. And look, while in Europe and North America it could be said that normality has more or less returned, in China there are still large-scale confinements. For instance, there was a confinement that caused the city of Shanghai to be under complete curfew between March and June. But take note, March and June 2022, that's just a few months ago. You don't believe me? Judge for yourselves. Shanghai eases COVID restrictions as two-month lockdown ends. Having seen the summary of how things are in China, let me ask you a question. What do you think happens when real estate companies close down, when banks stop lending, when citizens endure prolonged restrictions due to the pandemic? Well, not surprisingly, the economy is failing. To give a few examples, China's youth unemployment rate has risen to 20%, local consumption has plummeted, and housing prices have been in a free fall for more than 11 consecutive months. All this has officially led to the fact that, as you can see on the screen, the Asian giant is suffering for the first time, and apart from the pandemic, the nation has experienced the first contraction of its economy since at least 1976. And yes, I know what you're thinking. This is all great, and it's already clear to me that China is not at its best. But you've already told me all of this on visual politic, and this is a video about inflation in the West. Right? So how on earth does the Chinese crisis translate into day-to-day -day life in Europe and the US? Well, pay attention to the following graph. What you're looking at right now is the Industrial Price Index in China. For those of you who don't know, this index measures something like the inflation of products manufactured in the Asian giant. And notice that just as of November 2021, those industrial prices started to suddenly slow down. To give you an idea, since November 2021, Chinese industrial inflation has been declining by up to almost 10 percentage points. And remember what else we said that happened in November 2021? Indeed, that the real estate crisis erupted. Basically, this suggests that thanks to China's impoverishment and economic problems, its factories are being forced to curb their prices. And ultimately, if the Chinese crisis causes their factory prices to moderate, then we will be able to buy cheaper Chinese goods, and therefore that will curb inflation. However, beyond cheap products, there is a second major reason why the Chinese crisis could benefit our prices enormously. Can you take a guess what it is? Well, take a look. Chinese crude demand to contract for the first time this century, says IEA. Just as it says, as happens in any crisis where demand and production fall, the use of fossil fuels also falls. Basically, if you work less and produce less, you need less energy. This means that, according to the International Energy Agency, the Asian giant's crisis will reduce oil demand by more than 130,000 barrels per day in 2022, which, in short, and if everything continues in this fashion, will translate into cheaper oil, and likewise, cheaper natural gas for the rest of the world, or at least slightly cheaper, or less expensive. Now, note that I said, if everything Thing goes on like this. That is, if China continues to sink in the crisis and keeps going with falling industrial prices, then perfect inflation in the West will tend to fall. However, visual economic viewers, don't get your hopes up too high. I'm sorry to say that all the Chinese relief could be just a mirage that's about to end.
The People's Bank of China trimmed its five-year loan prime rate to 4.30% from 4.45% and its one-year loan prime rate to 3.65% from 3.70% on Monday. China, unlike the rest of the world, has started to lower interest rates to combat its demand crisis. And take note, because this is not the first time. It has already made two rate cuts so far this year. In short, what the government is seeking with this is to revive consumption, revive home purchases, and generally bring back the growth economic dynamic that has consistently characterized China over recent decades. Whether this measure by the Chinese government will be successful or not, only the future will tell. But what is certain is that if Chinese demand picks up again, Chinese industrial prices will rise again. And with that, energy demand would return to normal, and ultimately, all the price relief we are now benefiting from would come to an end. But be that as it may, enough about China. As we said at the beginning of this video, no matter how much Xi Jinping's country is helping to curb inflation, and no matter how much commodities have dropped considerably in price lately, Europe is still setting continuous inflation records, and the United States is failing to reduce its CPI from 8%. But that's not all. As you can see in this graph, the bottlenecks that used to saturate commercial ports around the world simply disappeared almost half a year ago. So to summarize, saturation and international prices are slowing down, and it's still not enough. This tells us that there is an underlying problem in Western economies that is causing inflation to keep rising regardless, a problem we haven't talked about yet. Do you want to know exactly what we are referring to? Well, listen up. The snake that bites its own tail. What you're seeing right now on the screen is the evolution of core inflation in both Europe and the United States. The pardon of showing core inflation and not normal inflation is that this type of inflation does not take into account the price of raw materials. And what we see is that in spite of everything, they are still at abnormally high figures, far from what would be healthy for our development. Prices keep on and on rising. And the culprit of all this has a name, inflation spirals. You see, beyond what happens in China, or what happens with oil or natural gas, when a society experiences very high inflation overnight, people start to incorporate it into their expectations. That is, by expecting inflation during the year, people start asking for higher wages, rents, and default payments. In a way, they try to anticipate what will happen to prices in the near future so as not to lose purchasing power. This means that even if actual inflation does not increase, so long as everyone is expecting inflation, then everyone will demand higher prices and wages in advance, and therefore, there will be inflation in any case. In other words, an inflation spiral would be like a snake biting its own tail. And I'm afraid that there are strong indications that this spiral is spinning at full speed. Check it out. These two lines in the graph show the difference between inflation of products and inflation of services sold in the United States. In recent months, following the fall in commodity prices, commodities have been moderating their prices rapidly, as expected, but services have continued as if nothing had happened. Prices continued to climb steadily. Somehow, it is as if products and services play at having different inflation rates, as if the drop in raw materials does not affect services at all. Now, what is the point of all this? Shouldn't inflation be more or less the same for everything? Well, no, because in reality, the the price of services depends to a large extent on wages. You know, if you go to a hairdresser, the biggest cost of your haircut will be the hairdresser's working time, and ultimately that will be what determines the price. So let me ask you, what did we say happens to wages when inflation spirals? Indeed, wages are rising steadily like a snake chasing its own tail. To be specific, US wages recorded a year-on-year -year growth of 5.6% in July 2022. And that means that despite the slowdown in commodity inflation, the prices of services, which are fundamentally dependent on wages, will inevitably become more and more expensive. Hold on a minute though, because don't think that inflation spirals are exclusive to salaries. Pay attention. Another very, very important element of the inflation spirals is the rents charged by landlords. As you can see, they have continued to rise unabated since the pandemic. According to a study by the San Francisco Federal Reserve, housing alone will increase inflation in 2022 and 2023 by 0.5 CPI points each year, which is quite a lot considering that the Federal Reserve's target is not to exceed 2% overall. And if housing prices alone will occupy 0.5%, well, it doesn't look very good, does it? Be that as it may, and although these data do not exactly give us much hope. The truth is that there are reasons for optimism. 
US job openings fall to nine-month low. Labor market holds tight. It's a fact. The US labor market is terribly strained. And no, I don't mean stressed in a bad way, but in the sense that there is a surplus of jobs, and that for now, relatively few people want to accept. As we just saw in a previous video, this situation can come to an end sooner rather than later. Presumably, more people will join the labor market. There will be fewer and fewer offers that fail to satisfy, and in conclusion, all those tensions we are talking about will gradually disappear. All of this could be the key to stabilizing wages. And if we add to this the effects of interest rate hikes, boom, then inflation spirals will have a very difficult time continuing to have their way. But does all of this also apply to Europe? Or is it something that only affects the United States? Well, in theory, yes. What is happening so far is that European core inflation has not been able to slow down, and in turn, the ECB has not been able to implement rate hikes as forceful as those in the United States. To illustrate, while the United States and United Kingdom have already raised their rates to 2.25 and 1.75 respectively, Europe has only done so by a mere 0.5%. You know, Southern Europe is not in the mood for a lot of interest rate shuffling. In any case, visual economic community. As we always say, the world of economics is not a world of fortune tellers. Here we have presented an overview of everything that is happening right now, and only time will tell us what the future holds. However, if we had to draw three main conclusions from all that we have explained, these would be the following. Firstly, if there has been an easing of inflation, at least in commodities and in the United States, it has been largely due to the Chinese crisis. Secondly, this Chinese crisis could come to an end with the Chinese government's push to make credit cheaper and stimulate public spending, so it is not certain that we will continue to have a favorable situation, at least in the short term. In any case, we have discussed this issue Issue in more detail on visual politic. And thirdly, a slowdown on natural resources and bottlenecks will not be enough to curb inflation. Spirals will also need to be resolved, and that will require keeping interest rates high and loosening labor markets. This seems to be working in the US, but is not going so well in Europe. Well, there you have it. Having reached this point, it's your turn. How long do you think Western inflation will last? Do you think China will manage to escape its crisis? And will the inflation spirals that send prices soaring be stopped in time? You can leave me your answers in the comments. And if you like this video, please consider giving a like and activate the little bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next one. All the best. See you soon.